Hey guys, and how are you doing today? And today I'm going to be going through a follow-up to our last video, which is the geometric and radiometric corrections. So geometric corrections is basically the positioning of pixels. So if we have two maps, one is georeferenced correctly and the other is not, we want to be able to line up both maps so that uh, when they be on top and below each other, um, we want to make sure that every single point and pixel is in the exact same place between both layers. So that's what we'll be doing today. And in our next video, we'll be going through radiometric corrections, which is essentially just removing atmospheric distortions across the entire map for every single wavelength. But first, geometric corrections. So first, I just want to open up a correctly georeferenced map and make sure it is a .dat file. .dat is just a dot, uh, like .datum .location type thing. Okay, so there we go. We have our first map. That's all fine. And so we just want to um, have both be infrared, which I'll do for my first one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, five, three. And so you know which ones to pick. Um, they have names here, and they'll in the metadata they'll say like what they are and all that. And so I just want to load our data in from first map. So there you go. We have a, a infrared image here. That's all fine. And then I just want to open up our second image, which is not correctly uh, georeferenced. Yep, so I just want to bring that in. And then I just want to go to Data Manager. I'm going to go to, uh, it's down here, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, four, two. And you can, again, you can see the uh, wavelength names there. I want to load this in, in a new view, so it'll be side by side. Uh, yep, that's correct. Okay, now we have two perfectly uh, near, near infrared images. That's all fine. Or two wavelengths, same wavelength images anyway. So now what we want to do is if we had these two images on top of one another and we poked a pin through, right? If we poked a pin through this top layer in any point, say like right here, then the pin would appear uh, probably somewhere close, but not on the exact same point, and that's the problem here because these images aren't like the exact same size per uh, pixel. So if you had a building in both of these images, one would be say you know like 50 by 50 pixels, and the other, which is a different pixel resolution note, would be something else, and the and the building wouldn't be entirely within those pixels. The building might be like uh, outside of those pixels into more incorrectly. So that's the major, major problem here. Uh, so what we first want to go into is we want to go into the geometric corrections toolbox, and then we want to go into the registration uh, subcategory toolbox, and then we want to go into image registration workflow. So if we just open this up, what we first want to do is we want to pick our base image file, and this is our correct one, the correctly georeferenced image. And then we want to go into uh, the warp, the, the image that we intend to warp to alter it to change it. So that will be our second file. So just go ahead and do that. Hit next on this. And this is the difference between older and newer versions. So in newer versions, you'll have an image on the left and an image on the right, just like you saw a second ago. And essentially, you'll be going between both, selecting a point, selecting the same point appearing in both maps. And so I'll be kind of be doing that here. But anyway, first things first, in my uh, both our versions, you have to do this. You go into the Advanced tab, and then you want to tell the computer how many points you want it to produce um, uh, more so than what will produce. So we don't want to line up every single pixel between both images. If we had to do that, we wouldn't be using a computer. Um, so we want the computer to produce uh, like X amount of um, points to roll out both maps so that they're perfectly aligned. Uh, so we're going to be producing, say, like four points, and then we want the computer to produce, you know, way more than that, so that the maps are perfectly in line with both of each other. So uh, we want to go to the seed tied points tab, and then if we do switch warp, basically we'll just be going between both maps. Uh, you can see that on the left here. Uh, so first what we want to do, we want to go to uh, start editing, and you can see add and delete. Um, remember in the new version, you'll have like an add with a tick, and you'll have a delete with a red X. And essentially you can just delete and add points a lot easier than in my version. But in my version, we'll have to be going through looking at one map at a time. In yours, you can look at both maps, and you can just um, one here, one there, one here, one there, one here, one there. Uh, on both maps. So you might be able to find, um, I don't know if this is the newer version, but in this version you can't zoom in properly, so I just have to go into pan, 
and then we can pan in. And so you want to select areas that are like man man made. So you don't want to pick like a tree because a tree cannot be there in maybe like ten years. That tree might have died or been moved or something. And you don't want to pick water areas either because water is constantly picking up and removing sediment and sand. And so this lake will be constantly changing in um, uh, in size and everything. And the same goes for the ocean. Uh, so we want to pick man-made places, preferably like road intersections, because roads expand so much area, so that they, they're, they're usually across the entire map, which is really, really nice. And um, that being said, uh, we'll get lots of points in very different places, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, so you might be able to find, um, let me just bring this back up, you might be like, oh geez, I can't, it's on add, I'm supposed to be adding points, but I can't add any points, I still have the pen tool open. I don't know how to get back into it. If I do stop editing, then all my points will be deleted. So that's okay, we can just minimize this. We want to go up to vectors and go create vector. And you'll notice my mouse has changed back so I can add more vectors in. So that's great. So we just want to add in um, points at like intersections and man-made areas. So one here, one there, uh, one, one at this road junction. I'm trying to remember where I put them. In yours, it's a lot easier than in your version because you can see both, so you know where you're putting them. So one on top of each other, one over here, and one on this corner. Oh, and I should say the number of points that you put in matters on which type of, um, uh, like how you define where pixels are. So remember, um, I said at the very, very last slide on my last video, I had like polynomial and cubic, and the other one, which. Which I can't remember at the moment. Um, those four will uh, we just accept these points. Uh, depending on which you choose, you'll need different numbers of points. So I should be able to put these in the same general place. I'll put one here. Put one... Uh, should be here, I think. And then I put one here, and then I put one over there. So you want to put the points in the exact same places. Uh, no matter what version you use, you have to do this. So I just want to go to accept points, and now my points should be pretty much lined up, I would say. Anyway, so then I can just uh, open this back up. So you can see I've added four seed tied points. That's perfect. So I just want to have the. Um, uh, don't worry about that. Uh, making sure that you have the right bands like linked up. Uh, anyway. And you can see what band is which, because um, red edge, red, green, you can see that here. And uh, different ones may be named differently, so this is red, green, blue, uh, depending on uh, your map and stuff like that. Uh, so different maps have different uh, wavelengths, maybe name different things, they probably shouldn't be, but they could be. Uh, so yeah, have, try to have those be like the same thing, matching band and base, matching band and warp. And anyway, so that's all fine, we can just hit next and move on. And so what the computer is now doing is the computer is generating way more points than I just made. I just made four, but the computer can make up to like, you know, a hundred plus. And so we want uh, both maps to be perfectly in line, as I said before. So the computer is producing more points in the exact same places between both layers, between both maps. That's what we just did, that's what the computer is doing way more of and way faster. So we're just automating what we just did, basically. <laughs> anyway, you can see a number of more, uh, let me just pan so you can see this, uh, move this over maybe. Uh, actually, let me just minimize this so you can see. Okay, so here's our number of points. You can see 10, 6, 11, and 9 is where I put my points, uh, so they're perfect. And um, if you're looking at, if you're in a newer version and you can see both maps, you can immediately just look at one point in both maps, in both sides of the screen. And you can say 10, 10 is not, 10 is in here on the left map, but 10 is not in the right place on the right map. So you can immediately see if there's error. But in this previous version and in the newest version, uh, you can look at the data error. And this is the important bit. So in data error, um, you want to make sure that uh, uh, you minimize it. So first, before I get into that, let me just talk about warping. Uh, so you can choose the warping method. So if you look at my last video, uh, you can see exactly what these are about. The very, very last slide of my last video. Um, this talks about how we define pixels. So just look at that. Um, but anyway, I want a warping method to be polynomial and I want the resampling to be uh, cubic convolution. 
So this is how uh, pixels will behave. And I want the output pixel size to be uh, of the warped image because that's what I've just altered. And so if I go back to this higher points tab and I go to uh, show table, I can see, oh geez, these are the 12 points I wanted. So there's 12 points in total. So you can see the amount of error here. This is the amount of error that every single point, not pixel, point between both maps have. Uh, so we want to make sure that the error is anywhere between 0 to 1. If it's above 1, then that is very, very bad. And if you put points in horribly positioned places between both maps, this error will be huge. And I should also say, um, if you keep removing points, what you want to do, uh, before I say that, you want to keep removing points until the error is between 0 and 1. And if eventually you get an error, which is, um, if you see all the error rows, say 0 0.00000, this means, this means that there is not no error. There is error. It's just that the computer cannot tell if there is error because there are so few points. So there should be numbers here. If you just have zeros across each row, there is not enough points for the computer to tell how accurate it is. Okay. So what we just want to do, well, we just want to select rows, and you can see, um, if I just move, uh, you can see the map at the bottom here. Uh, you can see the, how the map moves as it positions to each point. So you can see where every point is, even though the points are numbered anyway on the map, so you don't need to worry about this. Uh, but anyway, if we just hit point one, we select, select on the left, this is how you select the entire row. Uh, we want to get rid of anything that is above one in error. This is too much error. So if we just select down here, go to delete selected, you can see these number values will change. See how there's way more like 0.5s, 0. Point somethings now? This is because we just got rid of a huge error and so the smaller ones will be calculated better. It'll be assuming that that large error value, you don't want it. You'll be telling the computer, I don't want it, so I want all my other ones to be more correct. The computer will start moving and repositioning the map to spread it or crunch it up depending on how much error you think is acceptable. And I'm telling you <laughs> that not acceptable is anything above one. So one is like, think of one as 100%. If you get any error above 100%, that's a problem. So I wanna, if I get rid of, um, if I get rid of this, I'll uh, get rid of the 1.2. If I get rid of this one, uh, notice row four. Row four will become row three, but it won't be 0 0.19. Let me just show you that. So I'll get rid of three. Uh, there you go, it's not 0 0.19, it's now 0 0.2. So, yeah, the error has gone, actually the error would have gone up <laughs> in this case, yes, the, zero, the error has gone up. But the other ones, uh, see the, the other ones are now 0 0.3. The other ones were 0 0.5 before, I'm pretty sure. So, even though this error might have gone up, lots of the others have been diminished. Now, this, look at this one, this error is pretty much nothing. So, this point, this point in the map, is so accurate between both layers, between both maps, that there is pretty much no error. And that's exactly what we want to see. So this is looking a lot better. We have 10 points in total. We can just close this. I make sure that you choose a warping method depending on how you want to see it. So that's all fine. Uh, if we just go to next, uh, I'm just making sure it's all looking pretty right. Okay. Um, yeah, if you go, by the way, switch to warp just means switch between layers. So remember, warp is the image that we're altering, or warping, if you want to know what that button is. Anyway, so here we are, we can see our export uh, locations. We want to export our output image, and then our output, uh, like, data file. We want to put them both in the exact same place. So I'll just name this one uh, 22222, and you just want to name it, like, underscore corrected, so you know that this is the corrected image. And then you just want to move the tie points to two, 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 two. Put them both in the exact same location. So one is the points and one is the map. Output file name of the map and tie points are the points we just performed. So you just want to hit uh, finish and that should all be fine. And then you should see, <clears throat> you should see, should see at the end results. Uh, it's done. Here it is. Here it is. And so the loading bar at the bottom right, uh, this is when you can tell it's finished. I can see it's finished. So this is now the corrected, uh, under, underscore corrected dot dat file. This is the new map, which is now fully corrected. 
And so you're probably wondering, wait, why did I just do this? I mean, the first image was already correct, so why am I using this one? Well, that's the thing. Um, so when I have, when I call up like a plane or a satellite to fly over, they might, that company might have that plane or satellite which goes over that land in only a select few bands. So they might only have like band one, two, three, say blue, green, red. But um, uh, I want more bands and maybe they're not doing that for some reason. Or maybe I'm calling way in the future and they have more bands or something. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to line up the old map with the new map. And that's exactly what we just did here. We lined up a new map, which might have, say, seven bands, to an old map, which only had three bands. Um, that's exactly what we're doing. Um, maybe the new one doesn't have values for the pixels. So the pixels are just uh, are just a color value from 0 to 256. Um, and uh, what we wanted, we wanted to have a 0 to 1 value. That's really what we're changing. We're changing... Um, we're changing an arbitrary pixel value from 0 to 256 to a brightness value for each wavelength between 0 to 1. That is what we're doing in this. Anyway, um, I hope you guys have learned something, and I'll be doing radiometric corrections immediately after this video. Um, I just need to make sure I have everything perfectly right. Um, and in that, you'll just be using the radiometric uh, toolbox, just like we did with geometric toolbox. And anyway, that video will be a lot easier and a lot simpler to understand. But anyway, I hope you guys have learned something. Um, and I hope you can do great things with this. Anyway, good luck.